Oh, good morning, guys. It's been a while. About three days worth of checks. Finally connected. Not on Kyle's, but we'll get you turned around. Yeah, got to do another double on tunes here. So, we're going to get them taken care of and move on down the line. It's 15 degrees. It's a little colder than I thought it would be for coons moving, but uh, they was. All right. Okay, guys, we're on my. All right, guys, one legged trapper. We're on my uh, after work line here. Um, the last two days we've had nothing, so checks 10 and 11. I think we're on 12 here. Um, trap finally paid off I was about ready to give up on this property so I think we got another female here so uh I'm gonna you guys flip around watch the show so I got a call from the farmer saying I had a coyote in a snare that's not a snare so I don't know I do have some snares down here, so if that's a male, it's a juvenile, but I think it's a female, but uh, yeah, he's a jumper, that's why you guys got to really have your trap staked in, good, um, but uh, I'm going to pull up past him so I can get the tailgate there. Normal colored coyotes here. I'll try to get some pictures. Mm -hmm. Come on, buddy, sit still. Well, that had to be exciting for the for the farmer when he was checking uh, pulling bales today. Um, yeah, it's nice getting those calls when you're at work. You're like, oh, yes, <laughs> and you know you got something, and it's not just another day of nothing. So we ended up with the two coon this morning. We got this coyote, and I still got this is the first trap on this line. So we're gonna get dispatched and go from there. All right, guys. We'll. This was a flat set. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it a flat set, but it's gonna be probably more like a walkthrough set now, but show you the remake here in a minute. There we go. All right, guys. Um, here's the remake on that coyote set. We just uh, kept it and tried to turn more into a little more set. I'm um, planning on them coming up and down this road and I just want them to kind of work this edge and just whoop. So it worked once, but it wasn't this fluffed up. So, all right, let's get down the road, see what else we get. Okay. So, yeah, we had a bonus. The farmer must not have seen that uh, other yoke in the leg hold, because, yep, we ended up with a double on this property, finally. So, that's the male. He's got some good colors. He's got a nice white belly, good face. I thought I was far enough away from the fence, because the loop was actually, like, way back here. But, uh, apparently I wasn't, but either way, it's not a roadside fence, so it's legal. So, that one's been sitting there for a while. Again, lay snares. Set them, forget them. Just check them every day. So, um, I don't know if I'll be able to remake this. I don't want to sit under the fence, but, uh, just in case a deer pops underneath there. But that's the male. Looks like it's right behind his ears. I'll get him dispatched and we'll show you what he looks like, guys. All right, guys, well, we're letting the air out of this coyote here. He's, he's pretty much done. But I wanted to emphasize why I'm a fan of uh, kill poles and anything that entanglement for these coyotes. Um, I know DNR said it doesn't look good. He's dead. Um, I know DNR doesn't like it and people don't like them getting tangled up, but they either die. There's two good reasons for entanglements. One... They kill themselves on kill pole sets. This wasn't exactly a kill pole set, but he wasn't going anywhere. Two, 
is if you're running rebar there's no chance of them pumping stakes um because you're either tied off to a tree or even if you are staked they wrap up and they can't pump the stake um i'm going to show you guys something here uh with this so we just dispatched this coyote he's been hung up on this fence right so so you can see my stainless steel cable comes right to the stake right i already did this once but all right rebar it's too dry of a year to be using this shit but when i put it in there i tested it it was holding good but just a little bit of fight he put into it he uh he was able to loosen that up and if he wasn't able to tangle up if he wasn't able to tangle up we would have lost this dog with the cable and the stake so it would have been even more worse name for us trappers so um i'm a fan of entanglement I know a lot of states don't like you having them in there. And if you're in a state with, you can't have entanglement, like Missouri or uh, Illinois maybe. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, cable stake. Use your cable stakes. Or you run three to four foot rebar and that sucks pulling. So just cable stakes, you could cut them, leave them. Use disposable stake ends on these and some um, snap rings. Perfect. So just a little tip for you guys, just... We almost lost this dog. If he wasn't able to tangle up on this fence, we probably would have lost him. Um, so there's no remake in this set. I got plenty of leg holds out here, so there's a good chance to pick him up here and there. But uh, he's just, this is a big male to that probably one of them females that we caught here. So this makes number three on this property. So we're up to, that's eight, this is nine. So, all right, guys. We're going to keep on down the line. Um, yeah, he's... No more steam coming out of his mouth, so he's dead now. So uh, he's good to go. Uh, that's all I got for you right now. We got, I think, four more traps that I just can't see up the hill here. Um, they're only 25, 30 yards away, so uh, we'll see what we get into. But I, d I think this is going to be it. Wrap it up with a double on coons and a double on coyotes today. So uh, that's good. And we've got a warm front coming in next week. We're opening up all the sets, um, making sure... There's a good chance we're going to catch a bunch, so we're going to start untangling him. So I got to get to work. We got we're on burning daylight, and now I got a shitload of work to do. So, all right, guys, see you in a bit. All right, guys, we're starting to fill out up in there. And I've just got a few. Got working on getting some of the fur out of the freezer, putting up some of the fur that we caught today, and I had a buddy drop off a couple. So, uh, yeah. I didn't show you that uh, male um, that I caught in the snare. My bad. Sorry. He was pretty cool. Uh, really, he was kind of almost a blue hide on him. And if you know anything, you guys that do this a lot and know anything about fur and stuff, um, you kind of know what I'm talking about. You got white hides and blue hides. Um, actually, I'll show you. He's hanging up right here. So, prime hide, white hide, white leather, good leather, and don't make fun of me fleshing, alright, I don't care, let's go into the tannery, blue hide, usually on coons, blue hide is not a good thing, that's like a equivalent of a summer coat, so, but the coon pelts, the coon hides are really nice and white, so, uh, um, yeah, so that blue hide, that was, it's a little late to be having them, and we've had a week of really cold weather, so, his fur, I get set back down, but his fur, his fur was good, um, it was nice, fluffy, super, fluffy hide and for good felt on them but uh the leather is a little weird so uh um it's almost like he's got extra not guard hairs under hair under fur so it was a really fluffy dog when you grab a hold of him you could just tell he's not i mean super healthy um we got the last one over here that i gotta put up and then uh yeah, so this will be the close out of that video.
Uh, like I said, this, this is going to be sum up pretty much three days worth of checking. So pretty much two days of nothing. So I'll just save you the trouble of watching any of me just talk on the, those videos. And then today we just, I don't know what it was, super cold night. I'm surprised the raccoons are moving, but we doubled on coons. Um, you'll see that in the video. And then you had, uh, then we doubled up on coyotes by doubling up. You couldn't see them. They were half a mile away from each other, but on the exact same property. And the uh, pelts are almost identical. So they're say, probably the same pack, same family group. Um, a lot lighter than they look in the video. In the video, they look kind of a little bit darker. But they were actually pretty light-colored pelts. I'm excited to have them into the collection. Um, I'm really excited to get this one out. That one's for a buddy of mine. He, uh, one of the biggest damn dogs I've seen in a long time. Um, big, big male. Uh, yeah, one of the biggest coyotes I've seen. <laughs> so, um, I don't know what he weighed in at. I didn't weigh him. I didn't care. I just, it was a late night last night when I skinned him out. So, but he's got, his canines are twice the size of any of the coyotes that I've caught. And I actually, that big male I caught tonight, I put him up against it. And this coyote's got, I mean, at least 10, 15 pounds on mine in length. The length is good. So, but. No, that's what we got going on. So, I got a, one more coyote to flesh tonight. I pulled those three out tomorrow. I'll work on them. And that's the last of the coyotes, unless I pick some more up. The kids and I went through and busted open a lot of our sets. So pretty much counted as pre-baiting. We got all our traps frozen in the ground this last week. But we got a warm spell coming up, and we have no moisture predicted in the forecast. So we went through and busted open all of our sets, reset them all in dry dirt, um, and rebaited just about everything. There might be one or two we didn't. Um, my levee trap line I haven't touched yet. Uh, tomorrow, I'm debating on resetting that property. I got to see our, the levee line. And uh, if not, then I got the cattle, the pasture at 200. Um, I'm going to call it Bobcat Hill. That's, I want to get on there because I'm pretty sure I can catch my limited bobcats in there. Um, there's a lot of bobcats in that general area. So if I can get on the bobcat hill um i'll keep the levee line if i can't get on the bobcat hill then uh i'm gonna pull the levee line I'm, as much as i'd like to catch the one or two more coyotes that are in that general area i'm gonna give it a while um not that it's too much going into work checking that line um but it's not producing so it's a waste of fuel I mean, it took me a week for this property to kick off. This the wet my west line, and uh, yeah, that one's got all kinds of coyotes on it. Um, I just haven't been able to connect. Doesn't help my shit's frozen, so that was a lot of my fault. I was just pushing myself too thin. Didn't have the time to reset. Um, so tomorrow is Saturday. I'm going to just hit the shit out of a new trap line or I'm pulling lines or resetting. I'm either heading my west line and I'm going to run that thing the extra 15 to 1800 acres that I have up that way. Um, I told myself I wasn't going to trap that but since I picked up this new property that's now starting to produce because we've picked up three coyotes out of there um, here in the last four days or something like that so I try to keep a mental tab um, my goal is to try to catch one coyote per day that I trap um, and I know some days I don't catch one so right now I think I'm up to nine coyotes we are on check day 
12. So I need to catch three more to get caught up. Four more to get caught up. And I think that's achievable. A couple days of doubles. And then uh, we should be caught up. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'm not looking for a big numbers game this year. Although it's working out. I mean, I'm at nine. And we've been open since. It might be longer than check day 12. I don't know what day it is. We've gone three days without anything, or two days without anything. So, uh, yeah, that's what we got going on, guys. Believe you at that. Uh, have a good night. God bless and keep the grind on. Um, as always, just keep that grind going, man. It's only sleep. You get plenty of it when you're dead, man. Um, you only have this much time to enjoy life and do what you want to do and be with who you want to be with. So, I'll leave you at that. Keep the grind on, guys, and just take care.